DSP or digital signal processing, sometimes referred to as digital room correction, is a post-processing effect where an EQ is applied to the audio signal to correct for the speaker's or the room's frequency response. A measurement is taken from the listening position and the software applies an inverse EQ to cancel out the peaks and nulls. Now, you might think that the ability to digitally correct your frequency response would make acoustic treatment obsolete, but there are some serious limitations in what a DSP can correct for that can only really be solved with a solid treatment strategy. First off, it's impossible to correct for the interference from your early reflections using a DSP. When we treat first reflections, our goal is to lower the energy of the reflected sound in relationship to the direct sound. If you lower the signal from the speakers, both the direct sound and the reflected sound will be lowered in intensity at the exact same rate, so the reflected sound will still smear the audio image in the exact same way. By adding absorption to your early reflection points, you take energy away from the reflections without lowering the audio traveling directly to the listening position. The same concept extends to reverberation time. Long reverberation times color your sound image and make it harder to hear the direct audio signal accurately. Because a DSP can only really lower or raise levels at certain frequencies, the relative energy in the direct sound compared to the reverberation won't change no matter how many filters we add. Remember the last time you tried to have a conversation in a crowded restaurant or conference with bad acoustics? You weren't able to hear the person right next to you because of all the reverberations off the walls. Even if you EQ'd the source of those reverberations, the reflections are still in the room coloring the original sound and making it harder to interpret. And even if you lowered certain volumes of frequencies, this could just allow other frequencies to build up even more. By absorbing these reflections, we can keep them from lingering in the room and mixing with the original audio source. Even in instances where peaks and nulls are the issue, DSPs can't always solve issues stemming from room modes or SBIR. If a null in your frequency response is caused because of phase cancellation or destructive interference, then raising the level of that frequency won't solve the issue. The reflected sound causing the cancellation will also be enhanced, so that it causes the same cancellation when it overlaps with the original sound. Another limitation of DSPs is that they only work at the listening position. While we always measure from the listening position to tune our treatments, acoustic treatment can have a positive effect on the entire room and actually enlarge the sweet spot for accurate listening. If you're setting up something like a home theater with multiple seating locations, then DSPs aren't going to be able to correct for a room's entire audience. DSPs are best used as a finishing touch. Depending on the type of filter, they can require processing in real time during playback, so trying to correct for a wildly uneven frequency response can be taxing on your hardware. Also, trying to correct for a large peak or null using a filter might be beyond your speaker's capabilities. It's important to keep in mind what a DSP does to the amplifier and voice coil of your speaker. It's normally a good idea to use DSP in a subtractive only mode. For example, let's say you're using a correction that needs your system to pump out an extra 12 dB at 60 Hz to fill in a trough the microphone heard at the listening position. You don't really want to stress your voice coil or amplifier by compensating at such a narrow frequency cue. At minimum, you'll lower your dynamic range prematurely and worst case you'll fry out your speaker or amp. To get the most out of your room, you'll want to treat your early reflections, reverb time, and room modes with treatment, and then have the DSPs clean up the smaller issues. This will also ensure that you're not overly EQing the original mix to the point where it becomes inaccurate. While the technology is impressive, the physics of sound limit what DSPs can and can't correct for. If you're still struggling with your frequency response, check out our free acoustic advice form and one of our room designers can help you get the most out of your room.